There we go. Check this out. Buying somebody alcohol when you're 27 and they're 18 in the United States of America is actually a crime. But also, even if it wasn't illegal, it's still extremely immoral. Do I need to remind everybody again? Do I need to put the reminder out there? What? Uh, hold up, hold up. Yeah. Much like how grooming children is a crime in a sexual manner, grooming children and grooming those who have not yet got their prefrontal cortex developed in a sense of trying to recruit them for war is disgusting also. Once again, the human brain doesn't develop fully until you're 25. I'm 24, oh, and my little pea brain hasn't even developed fully yet. So these guys were already teen. He was 27, 26 at the time. He's now 28, and I think some of them have only just turned 18, 19. That is creepy. That, in my opinion, is predatory. Guys, a little word of advice. You can be extremely immoral, even if it follows the law. Meet a tozy. A tozy has quite the following. Having over a million subscribers, you would think this person would know about fraud editors, but it seems like he's only just figuring these things out. Right, there's this man, he got caught doing something, he, and he did it time and time again, and he got found out, okay? He fucked around and he found out, and I'm wondering, when is it going to happen for the fraud editors? It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. When's it gonna happen for the frauditors? All to commit insurance fraud. And they didn't leave it at that. They also posted all the evidence online for everyone to see on TikTok and YouTube. So they were really close to just being the pinnacle of influencer morons. Their content became very popular because they were posting dash cam footage of essentially the husband driving incredibly recklessly, causing accidents, starting fights, road raging, and just the whole nine yards. So the last two videos he posted backfired massively. One of them, he accused the person who was the victim in all this of doing exactly what he did. And then in the second video, he claimed that the police were conspiring against him. Yeah. Sound familiar, guys? This is Jeremy Wallace. He's about to set me up with a church. He's about to set up an accident. He recognized me from Facebook. <laughs> What? After only watching that video one time, you may be confused because this guy wow. is accusing the other driver, the innocent man involved in this, of doing exactly what he's doing to him. So if you watch this video again, you notice that this guy here, what you see here, this is Jeremy Duwamis. He's about to set me up where he turns me. He's about to he slams brakes, and when he sees the guy who tries to avoid him, he turns and goes across the double line yeah. to make sure he hits him. It looks like he tried his hardest to get hit, and not only that, he filmed right. it all, posted it on the internet, and overlaid the video with his own face. I mean, this is just Darwinism at its finest. And he even posted a TikTok right before he went into court. So, I'm here. There's a guy. That's one of the detectives. <laughs> I'm here. And we're going to do this. Find out if they're going to conspire with the sheriff or if they're going to cooperate. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. This is the last video he posted, by the way, because he was arrested after this. That last one's a wild video to post before getting arrested. Just from watching that video, it doesn't seem like he has any remorse whatsoever. But this whole story revolves Christopher and Kimberly Phelps, a couple from Ukiah, California. And as you saw, they deliberately caused multiple car accidents to scam money out of insurance companies. And the wildest detail of this story is they were intentionally causing car accidents with their kid in the backseat. So uh, fortunately for the California citizens, the California Department of Insurance stumbled across their YouTube and TikTok channels. And as I mentioned yeah. earlier, these videos were just loaded with his reckless actions, including yeah, collisions, road rage incidents, and near misses. Thankfully, though, they made it very easy for investigators because they posted over 100. 60 videos to those YouTube channels, which is essentially just evidence of everything they did. Because those videos showed that these collisions were not accidents. These were intentional acts by Christopher. And he really racked so up some numbers he filed 17 suspicious it. insurance claims related to 23 look documented the chili, collisions the featuring Astros. all these videos. And then for the icing of the cake, there were 42 videos showcasing road rage incidents and attempted collisions, some of which seemed to be intentional. And it didn't take long for their channels to also catch the attention of the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. This happened from the video that we watched earlier where Christopher caught another very weird collision where it seemed like he turned out into the lane to purposely get hit by that truck with a trailer. And I guess unfortunately yeah. for Christopher, this led the investigators straight to him. Now, this time, Christopher faced a bunch of charges, including six counts of assault with a deadly weapon, 11 counts of insurance fraud, and five counts of child endangerment. Kimberly was also charged with two counts of felony child endangerment and one count of felony insurance fraud. Both of them ended up being booked with a half a million dollar bail for each of them. And the recent update to this entire story is that Christopher was sentenced to three years of state prison. Kimberly was sentenced to 90 days in the weekend county jail slash work release, three years of supervised probation, and a 52 week child abuse prevention program. But the massive kicker to the story, though, is the San Bernardino DA said the reckless and fraudulent behavior of the co defendants posed a danger to society while risking the safety of their own child. Our office is confident that, in addition to the defendant Phelps' prison term and ordered restitution to all victims, Public safety 
in San Bernardino County will greatly be increased with his lifetime revocation of driving privileges. So, I mean, hey, if you're a California driver, you are now a lot safer today than what you were last year. Overall, though, what a crash human being. I'm still trying to understand the upside here. Like, okay, you might make a few extra dollars committing insurance fraud, but if you're doing this with your child in the backseat, like, at what cost? You're risking your kid's life. You're risking your own life. You're risking your Let wife's life. Let me drop you down the freedom. rabbit hole now, of frauditors. Locked away for three years where he can't be a father. The mother is also getting that sentence, so she can't really be a mother for a little while. It's a sad story. Overall, though, I'm happy they were caught in the justice system actually did something about this because I genuinely believe California is now a better place to drive with them not being on the road. In my last video, we went through some of the clips showing how insane his driving really was. Like, he clearly had no place on a public road. But I guess the icing to the cake of this whole stupidity was not only did he commit insurance fraud with his kid in the backseat, putting the kid's life at risk. No, he also documented it himself and just willfully posted it himself on his own TikTok and YouTube account. But, <laughs> where's the upside here? Like, is the potential upside of, oh, maybe I can make a little bit extra YouTube ad revenue off of yep. my insurance fraud as well? Really? That's, that's, that's what we're doing? how they, they do. The risk of being and the fraudders do it times. trying to. We need to be Darwin, like the whole like Darwinism is ah uh, he removed himself from the gene pool, but this guy is just like what, what's the influencer version of Darwinism where you do something so incredibly stupid you end up in jail for a couple of years rather than mm -hmm. I don't know, being with your family. If you can think of what that could be, comment down below. I might need to implement that into the channel. And especially that last clip where he was accusing the police of conspiring against him, sitting there in the courtroom. I mean, how does that help you? Overall, this is just a very yeah, interesting case. You see I'm a little bit and, uh, amazed at how he essentially just ruined his own life and posted it for the entire internet to see. I realize we cover a lot of people like that, but this one, this dude's in his forties and he's doing it. Normally we no, can when you see the predators. Like 19, 20, maybe 25 year olds do. And what's wild about this guy mm -hmm. as well is like, I can't even show the worst of his clips here because I don't want this video to get demonetized. But I'm just completely baffled that he would go as far to upload these clips where it's so clear that he's in the wrong. And he's right. uploading it to YouTube assuming that he's in the right and that he deserves sympathy for this. Because poor it's guy just cannot drive YouTube. whatsoever. And he has to post it on the internet to show the world that he cannot drive. Poor dude. The people I pity is the people that have to share the road with him. And this week right. has been a busy week as well. There is so much happening, especially revolving TikTok. I don't know why, but everyone decided to be incredibly stupid on TikTok this month. So I got plenty of videos mm -hmm. coming for you guys soon, and I swear, every single time I find a new topic, at least recently, I've been like, how? Why did they do that? Some of it's actually a little bit tragic, but like, it's it's like, it's so stupid, it's laughable, but I also feel bad for them at the same time. Stay All right, and here you see the kind of people the frauders are being misled by when they make them calls to their supposed attorneys. They're really calling people like this. Cops were listening in, and they soon discovered what all the code words meant. When the federal police came knocking, they found five different mobile phones she used to communicate with her customers. And in that bedroom, Look at all those passports and shit, more too. than $244,000 cash inside. <sighs> and the you-know-what hit the fan at number five. So just as well, she bought the 18 pack. Wherever there's a big pot of money, you're going to find people working in the shadows in an organized way, criminals going yeah. after that money. Yeah. With 180 billion... And she was doing it all, all while she was scamming the government out of Social Security money. And she was teaching other people how to do it, too. And she knew, she knew specific doctors that would lie for patients for a price. Corruption lies in people like secret sovereign citizens getting hired. Not in people following policies. Like, the chest cams were put in place to make sure the cops followed protocol. They got policies, and they have to follow protocol, otherwise they will lose their job. Their cameras are to help them prevent a lawsuit. Frauditors go around with their cameras trying to create a lawsuit. And it's fucking bullshit, and the judges and the... And detectives and, and all the investigators need to look back at their YouTube channels and find out, realize that this is an habitual occurrence with them. They're they're habitual offenders. They 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 are not learning. And isn't that what the correction facilities are supposed to do? You know, they're supposed to correct those behaviors. Why are the frauditors getting worse? I'll tell you why. It's because the profits are outweighing the punishment. YouTube is paying them better than what the government is punishing them. Now, I, I, no, I, I, I feel like we're going to lose the privilege of live streaming before we have the government make any rules against them. Because, you know, that, that's, that's just how shit goes, and you know. The money wins out in the end. This is like, look at our education systems. Once our phonics books went to capitalism, to QVC, it was all downhill from there.
and it was all Hooked on Phonics worked for me. Hooked on Phonics did work. Our Phonics books back in the 80s, they did work. They worked. But, uh, yeah, they put them into the world of capitalism. So, yeah, blame QVC for the failed education system. QVC and all the greedy little fucks out there that would rather make money. You've done remarkably well. For someone who's blind. Yeah, look at that. And let me repeat that. 21 years she claimed the disability support pension thanks to you. You've seen your doctors in Lebanon told you that you were permanently blind. Yeah. That it was a hopeless case. Is it hopeless? Not no. no. It was a little tougher here, but after an initial Aussie knockback, she shopped around and eventually found a doc who said she was blind. You write me some help? Yes, Rebecca had been having a lend of us. But now, a bigger roar has been uncovered since I reported that first blind sighting of us taxpayers. Without the shackles of blindness, Rebecca has not a care in the world and is ready for another big day out, possibly buying a toothbrush because she's facing time in the slammer for this latest indiscretion. You see, Rebecca has just pleaded guilty to dealing with money reasonably believed to be the proceeds of crime and conspiring <laughs> with others to rip off Centrelink. The Centrelink chief worked hand in hand with her now dead husband, Jamal Alali. Jamal Alali. It just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Jamal Alali. On quite a scheme. He got stuck on the insult of mocking dude's name, Jamal Alali. But uh, what they were saying about that guy was that he worked hand in hand with the government. So he knew exactly what paperwork. He needed to get to help others scam that very government out of money the same way he was doing for his wife. And, and it cut in half what he was saying, but it, it was it was her then, her now dead husband. So, yeah, he helped her get her foot in the door. And then she helped others get their feet in that do very door. Their modest public housing abode doubled as a tape for tricksters. The pair would complete Centrelink forms for fraudsters, giving them advice on seeking out doctors who would turn a blind eye to their cheating ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she'd even go to the doctors with them, in case the GP asked too many questions. This woman was a star student. After graduating with a fistful of Rebecca ideas, she told Centrelink her daughter had ADHD, when the child didn't, and subsequently got 66 grand in payment. Uh, what? Are yeah, you know, I I don't get it either. And, and, and imagine this, okay? Here in America, we also have these Moors and American state nationals that they're going around feeding people idea about driver's license and identity. Yeah, people driving out on the road crazy, avoiding speed limits, driving drunk, and just saying, oh, where's the victim? Where's the victim when they get pulled over? Talk about disgusting shit. We have seen organized criminals ripping off money in the childcare sector, ripping off money from the government and therefore from their fellow Australians. I mean, they act shocked every time it's happened. The services, Paul Fletcher points out, the repercussions these gangs have on all of us. Every dollar that goes to somebody who's not entitled to it is a dollar that could be used to put vital life-saving drugs onto the pharmaceutical benefit scheme. Well, yeah, that just goes without saying, obviously. But back to Rebecca, who didn't have a hankering for a Big Mac, but she didn't mind their toilets. Here, she would meet her Centrelink frauding students away from prying eyes. After giving them the fraudulent advice they needed, she demanded from them a kilo and a half of sweet grapes, or perhaps two kilos. No, not real grapes. That was code. A kilo and a half was $1,500. Two kilos was two grand. Could you imagine just going into the McDonald's bathroom and... See, the cops were listening in, and they soon discovered what all the code words meant. When the federal police came knocking, they found five different mobile phones she used to communicate with her customers. And in that bedroom, they found a safe with more than $244,000 cash inside. And the you-know-what hit the fan at number five. So just as well she bought the 18-pack. Like never before.
In the last four years, we've managed to save three mm, yeah, billion Please, dollars. let me um, drop you down the, ramped up our compliance efforts when we came the to rabbit hole of fraud. Well, honestly, that's good to hear. I mean, this video is it? For real, though, the content kind of writes itself. Federal agents worked out as his students defrauded taxpayers of just over $137,000. Jesus At Christ. At least six of her students have been charged and two jailed. Rebecca, mm. can you hear me? Last time you were blind. Are you deaf and dumb now? <laughs> Hello. Nice. She'll soon be hearing a magistrate, though. Currently on bail, she's yet to find out her fate for masterminding her latest scheme. We'll find you. We'll catch you. We'll prosecute you, and you may well go to jail. And we'll kill you. I mean, yeah, you might go to jail. Who knows? <laughs> but in the meantime, she continues to live in her publicly funded home. Jesus. And apparently she got a sentence in July, but like I said, that was a few years ago. If you guys know any updates on this story, leave it down in the comments down below. Let everyone know. Did she get sentenced? We don't know. He's got some skimmers on scanners. He's got other people's IDs in here. Yeah. So, um, that's what, you know, the credit card schemer things. He's got all these cell phones from Metro PCS. Um, wasn't one of the places that was here at Metro PCS place? Who's safe with that in your car? That's our message going to the I mean, uh, yeah, I've, I've had it for a long time. I've been holding it for a friend. Probably six months, six months, something like that. You never opened it? No, I never opened it. You never opened it? He gave me the key, but I never opened it. Why are you hanging on to somebody else's safe then for six months if you're not sure what it is? He was a, a, a friend of a friend, so I was like, you know, it's, I didn't assume there's anything bad. I mean, it's just a safe. What else is in that car that I need to be concerned about? There's nothing in the car that you need to be concerned about. The only thing that I do have in there are some gym passes that I used to work out with because people I can't afford it. And that's just being honest with you. Where'd you get those? I, I found them. Do we have blue jeans or anything for I found them at the gym. Because sometimes people leave them behind. You're good, that's why I'm happy. Yeah, you're using somebody else's identity. Think about that one. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Do you have any reason why you have these in your car? No. They don't, you, where did you get those? They, I, you have a bunch of IDs. That's illegal to have on you. They, they passed out thousands of those. Why'd you keep them? Because I was going to give them back. Honestly, I, at some point, I was going to give them back. I don't know why I was holding on to them. I was going to give them back at some point. I you did. know that some of them have been gone for over two years? When were you going to get around to getting them back from? No, they ha I haven't had them for over two years. How long have you had them? Maybe three or four months. Have you contacted anyone? I've, I've contacted my boy. I wrote to them. And I was gonna, get, I was gonna contact him, but I hadn't been able to reach him. And I called him, he had to pick up. And like I said, all those cards I found, that as far as was the safe, I was holding it for a friend. Do you know that some of the people that those cards that you that you have have actually filed police reports because someone's obtained their personal information through those cards and opened bank accounts? Dude, all those cards I found, I, I, just, I never forgot this. I don't okay, know. I'm just telling you, that's that's what we know so far. I'm guessing the guy that's probably working with is just probably giving them personal information, right? Giving them copies of their um, fitness cards, or they leave them in the locker room or whatever. He gets them, gives them to this guy. This guy records the information, does the credit. He does not need to do the credit card numbers. All he's got to do is have the credit card number itself. Then have right. a credit card. Yeah. Calling the bank because he's got that scanner. He's calling the, the bank. He's calling the bank from the go phone. So every time they call back to the go phone, now he leaves a weekend to find out who he is because he can go into um, any phone store and say, you know. Um, Joe so whoever can say, you know, I need a go phone. He gets a go phone, and now he's obviously got some of them. So. Okay. And whichever ones go through, and he gets money, then he just goes to that bank and withdraws that money, and there it is. These people are finding the vulnerable, you know, people in jail, runaways, you know, uh, single mothers that are about to give birth, you know. They take in the vulnerable, They'll give them, they, they could give them a place to stay or give them a job with driving around with the live stream. They hook them up with these phones and then they have them drive back and forth and keep the cops distracted. They're connected to the people like the sovereign citizens and the Moors and, and the American state nationals willfully giving up their rights as American citizens. Trying to turn, and this is what they're being told, they're turning in their IDs for these fake travel ID cards. They want to consider themselves American citizens, but they don't want to go by the American rules. Like, out on the road and in specific buildings. And I mean, these people think they could just pop a tent anywhere. They want all the rights with none of the punishments. Yeah. 
See, the cops wear these chest cams now. And they got to follow the policies, okay? Handcuffs and all. They have to follow protocol. And they have to get people's names for the books for the next shift to know who the assholes are, okay? And, and who the problematic people are and such. They have to put it in the system for the next shift to know. And um, the corruption comes from these secret sovereign citizens getting hired. Secret citizens getting hired and taking these positions of power and letting these people slide. People like the ones that drive with the fake license plates and all of such. People that piss out in the middle of the street and all of such. Okay. Listen to this shit. Your job, you fucking clown. Bet you lose your job. I wasn't gonna do a summons, but he wants to act like this. So I'm like, no, no, he's gonna go to jail. Yeah, we I'm gonna go to jail. jail. Yeah, you're going to jail, buddy. I'm going to jail. Okay. We're okay. He's not gonna have a job. He's not gonna have a job. Hey, hey, Dan's gonna have Mickey hey, out. He's not gonna have a job. We don't care. No, we don't care. I'm trying. I'm trying. No, you know that Dan is gonna have a job, and he's not. So we don't care. Hey. Dan has me out right now. Fucking clown. You're a fucking hey. clown. Open up the fucking door and let me fight you one on one. Bet what happens? Hold, jab, yeah. Hey, no. Yeah, and look what his girlfriend did. She knows those threatening stares. Yeah, she opened the door to let him out. That is what just happened there. What you just saw there. Here, let me slow it down. Right, right. Now I put it on normal speed. Watch. What happens? Hold, jabs, yeah. Stubs, hey, yeah. No. He, she grabbed the door. Let him out. And hear him laughing about it? He thinks it's funny. He 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 thinks it's funny. Wait, listen what listen what's happening. What do you mean? Of course the door is going to open. But yeah, these kids, they think they can just get away with anything because of who they're related to. Corruption lies in people letting people slide. People getting other people out of drama and, you know, trouble and difficult situations. And that's what cops that are related to people that that's what they do nepotism it's called fucking nepotism yeah and that's what it is For life, just what How do these kids think this is funny? What? I'm not in the military, so. Fucking know it all. Can't do that. You can get out in the morning. Yeah, when you bond out, you'll be able to get out. A slap on the wrist. A slap on the wrist. What happened to indecent exposure? So we're looking good. Looks like we're going to get in and out of here without any major issue. Oh, let's go say hi to Alex, see how he's doing today. No waste. Paying your fucking wages, stupid little bitch. Like I said, I'd like a little more than whatever I'm being paid, so... Uh, Don't get paid enough by Ally? Huh? Not to deal with you. Ally doesn't pay you enough? Not to deal with you. 
got to deal with with me, with you, got to deal with you. You got any basic English language skills? Considering you don't understand her, but I bet you espouse it. You espouse the virtue of the sure or the reality. Unsubscribe for it. There's truth in it, and I bet you you're one of those people who who even had a mother. Really, a despicable person. I saw that guy sitting there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so mad right now. I'm so furious. I walked into that building and that guy was just sitting there. He was sitting down. I know, I know he was thinking, oh, I'm going to get those people. I knew he was about to pounce on them. I could tell by the way that he was just sitting there. How dare he just, just sit. Oh, what a horrible person. I know, I knew it. I knew what was going on inside of a mind reader. He just wanted to torture and abuse people. You could tell because he was sitting Finding his own business until I approached him. See? That proves the tyranny. <laughs> that video illustrates perfectly how making the video in and of itself becomes the priority. Yep. She literally had two homeless people in there that asked her for help. She said she'd help them, and she did, but she had to stop. And pick up the security guard first. She just had to. She's going to start foaming at the mouth over this. So be it. She talks about how they were about to be harassed. There's no evidence of that. There's no proof of that. There's nothing of the sort in her video that would indicate that that is what was about to happen. This woman's a lunatic. And anyone who supports her, her in DMA... Turn that whole click out there. Pretty sad. If you have any interest in whatever I might be bitching about next, just click on that subscribe button and click the like button just because I said so. Because you know you want to. We out. Been real. Oh yeah, and welcome to the world of fraudulenters. Don't forget to vote for Chili DeCastro for the Grifties Award.